In this video, I want to take a look at the chain rule. Now, the chain rule gives us a method to quickly differentiate functions which involve large powers. So let's just write down an example here. So let's say I had y equals x plus 2x cubed. That's all to the power of 4. Now, if I were to differentiate this normally here, we need to fully expand the right-hand side and differentiate term by term. However, with the chain rule, we can do this in a much quicker way. So to find dy by dx here using the chain rule, dy by dx, so by the chain rule here, this would be dy by du, dy by du, and then we'd multiply this here with du by dx. Okay. So what I'd need to do here now is take the bracket here, the inside of this bracket, and substitute that as u. So we'd let u here be x plus 2x cubed. And then from here, we could find du by dx. So we'd find du by dx. And obviously, y is equal to x plus 2x cubed to the power of 4. But if x plus 2x cubed is u, then I could say that y is equal to u to the power of 4. Okay, and from there, we could find dy by du. We'd then multiply those together, and that would give me dy by dx. Okay. Now, we can generalize this result here. So if we have, um, let's say, y is equal to a function f of x, that's all to the power of n here, then dy by dx, so dy by dx here is given as n multiplied by f of x to the power of n minus 1. So f of x the n minus 1. And then what we do here is we multiply this now by the derivative here of f um, of f of x. So I'm going to get f prime of x. Okay. So you can see I bring the power down, multiply that with f of x, but reduce the power by 1, and then multiply all of that then by f prime of x. Okay. And that's the chain rule. Okay. Now I think with the chain rule it's a little bit abstract when you see it for the first time, and it's generally easiest when you take a look at a couple of examples. So what we're going to do now Let's take a look at a few practice questions here for the chain rule. Starting off with question one then, we've been given that y is equal to x plus 2x cubed to the power of 4, and we're asked to find dy by dx. Now if we didn't know how to use the chain rule here and we wanted to differentiate this, we'd need to use something like the binomial expansion, and then we could find dy by dx by just differentiating term by term. However, with the chain rule, we can differentiate this much easier um, just applying the chain rule. So let's just know what y is here. So y is equal to x plus 2x cubed all to the power of 4. Okay. So there's two things we need here. We need du by dx. So I need du. I should write this down. So I need du by dx. And I also need um, dy by du. Okay. We need dy by du as well. Because once we've got du by dx and dy by du, I can then find dy by dx by just doing the product here of dy by du, dy by du, and du by dx. Okay. So where do we get du by dx from and dy by du? Well, I need to use a substitution here. So I say that the inside of the bracket here is u. Okay, so we let u be equal to x plus 2x cubed, so x plus 2x cubed. Okay, so in that case, then we can find du by dx. So du by dx here. That would simply be the derivative of x plus 2x cubed with respect to x here. So go term by term. So differentiate x here, with respect to x, that'd be 1. And then 2x cubed, that would be 6x squared. So we get 1 plus 6x squared. Okay. We now need dy by du. So where do we get dy by du from? Well, if we know that y is equal to x plus 2x cubed to the power of 4, but x plus 2x cubed is u, okay, using this substitution here, then we can say that y is equal to u to the power of 4. And from here, we can find dy by du. So dy by du, just differentiate here um, y with respect to u. So in that case, I'm going to get 4u to the power of 3. Okay. 
So from here, now we've got everything we need. We've got du by dx. We've got dy by du. So in that case, then, we can find dy by dx. So dy by dx is equal to dy by du. So dy by du, so that's 4u cubed. And then we multiply that by um, du by dx. So that's 1 plus 6x squared. 1 plus 6x squared. Now be careful, this isn't our solution here because we know that u is equal to x plus 2x cubed. So what I need to do now is substitute u back into here. Okay, so that's going to be equal then to 4 lots of x plus 2x cubed. And then we multiply that by 1 plus 6x squared. Okay, don't forget the power of 3 here. So 4 lots of u, so u is x plus 2x cubed. Uh, and then we raise that to the power of 3 and then we times that by 1 plus 6x squared. Okay, so I nearly missed the power myself. Do be careful for that, it's very easy once you have two powers like this that are the same. Um, but there we have it, so that would be our solution there. So that's dy, dy by dx there, okay? Now that's the long method of doing it, um, by writing everything out. What I want to show you now is how you can do this in a much quicker way. I'll just clear the screen here. And we just start off again with y. So y is equal to x plus 2x cubed the power of 4. Okay, again, I am using the chain rule here, but I'm going to go through this now without using um, du by dx, for example, um, and dy by du. So the first thing I do here is I take my power and I multiply this by the coefficient in front of the bracket, which will often, in our case, just be 1. I'm going to do 4 times 1, which is 4. We then multiply it by this bracket here. That's x plus 2x cubed. What I need to do now is reduce the power by 1. So 4 minus 1 gives me a power of 3. And what I need to do now to finish with here is multiply all of this here by the derivative of the inside of the bracket. If you differentiate x plus 2x cubed with respect to x, that would give you 1. And then 2 times 3 is 6, so I get 6x squared there. Okay. And there you have it. Once you've done that, we've got dy by dx there. So dy by dx. Okay, and there we have it. That's our solution there. So like you can see, that way is a lot quicker. I think once you've got enough practice kind of um, with these types of questions, you will prefer that method. Um, but if you're just starting off, maybe stick to the method where we need to find um, dy by du and du by dx. Okay, but there we have it. So that's our solution to question one. Moving on to question two. Now we've been given the curve C here, which has equation y equals the square root of 4 minus x. Know that the point P lies on C and it has coordinates of minus 5, 3. We're asked to find an equation of the tangent to the curve C at the point P. So let's just know what y is here. So y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x. Now, the very first thing I need to find here is dy by dx. So we need dy by dx, but the question is why do we need dy by dx? Well, if we're going to find the equation of the tangent, we need the gradient. So we need the gradient at this point here, so minus 5, 3, okay? So what I'm going to do here is write y in index notation. So rather than writing this as the square root of 4 minus x, we can write this as 4 minus x to the power of a half, okay? From here now, we can use the chain rule to differentiate this. So we take the power, multiply that by the coefficient here in front of the bracket, so we don't write it, but there's a 1 there. So 1 times a half would give me a half. We then multiply this by this bracket here, but don't forget we need to reduce the power by 1. That's 4 minus x to the power of minus a half. So minus a half. We're not done here because what I need to do now is differentiate the inside of this bracket here with respect to x. That would give me minus 1 we times all of this here by minus 1. That's going to give me minus a half. We get minus a half there. And then we times that by 4 minus x to the power of minus a half. Okay. So what I can do is I can also write this now as this would be minus 1. So let's just try that again. This is going to be minus 1 all over two lots of the square root of 4 minus x, okay? That's two lots of the square root of 4 minus x here, so okay? So these are equivalent. 
I'm just writing it like this because it will be easier to find the value of the gradient at this point here. Okay, so this is dy by dx. Okay. So I want to know the value of dy by dx at this point here. So in that case then, when x is equal to minus 5. When x equal to minus 5, dy by dx is going to be equal. So that's going to be minus 1 over 2 lots, the square root of 4, minus minus 5. Minus 1 over 2 lots of the square root here. So 4 minus minus 5. That's the same as 4 plus 5, so that's going to be the square root of 9. So the square root of 9 is 3, so that's minus 1 over 2 times 3, which would give me minus 1 over 6. Okay, so the gradient at this point here is going to be minus 1, 6. Okay, so all we need to do now is use the equation of a straight line. So don't forget the gradient here is minus 1 over 6, so let's just clear all this so we can finish this question. Let's just note down m here. So m is minus 1 over 6. So we need to use y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. Okay. But x1, y1 will be this uh, will be this point here, this coordinate. So x1 and y1. Okay. So just substituting everything in here, I'm going to get y. Minus y1, which is 3, so y minus 3, is equal to m, which is minus 1 over 6. Minus 1 over 6 multiplied by x minus x1. So x1 is minus 5, so minus minus 5 is the same as plus 5. Okay. And we need to give the answer here in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are all integers. So clearly we don't want this fraction here of minus 1 over 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides here by 6. I'm going to get 6y minus 18. It's going to be equal. So this would be minus 1 lot of x plus 5. So just expanding now by this minus here on the outside, I'm going to get minus x minus 5. Okay. So what I'm going to do here now is just put everything on one side, set that equal to 0. So I'm going to add x to both sides. I'm going to add 5 to both sides as well. In that case then, I'm going to get x plus 6y, and we've got minus 18 plus 5, and that would give me minus 13 there. Okay, and that's all equal to 0. And there we have it, so that's our solution. We can know a, b, and c here. So a is the coefficient of x, so that's 1. b is the coefficient of y here, so that's 6. And c is the constant here, which is minus 13. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to question two. And finally, taking a look now at the very last question here, where we've been given f of x is equal to x plus 4 to the power of 5. And we're asked to show that the second derivative is equal to a multiplied by x plus 4 to the power of b, where a and b are just integers to be found. Let's just know f of x here to begin with. So f of x is equal to x plus 4 to the power of 5. If I want to differentiate this here and get f prime of x, we need to use the chain rule. So to use the chain rule here, we don't need to go about kind of doing the full method. We can just use the basic rule here. So we take the power, multiply it by the front of the bracket. So in front of this bracket here, there's a 1. We don't write it, but there is a 1. So 5 times 1 gives me 5. Then I multiply this bracket here by this 5. So that's x plus 4. And then for the power here, remember we reduce that by 1. So that's going to be to the power of 4 now. But we're not done here because what we need to also do is multiply all of this now by the derivative of the inside of the bracket. If I differentiate x plus 4 here with respect to x, that would simply give me 1. We times all of that by 1, which doesn't actually change this part here. So we're just going to get 5 lots of x plus 4 to the power of 4 there. Okay. And we need the second derivative here, so I need to differentiate f prime of x here with respect to x. So f prime prime of x. So again, just using the chain rule here, hopefully nice and straightforward. We take the power here, there's 4, multiply by this coefficient, so 5 times 4 is 20. Again, we multiply by this bracket here, that's going to be 20, multiplied by x plus 4. We reduce the power by 1. 
that's to the power of 3 now and don't forget we do multiply this now by the derivative of the inside of the bracket but don't forget that will simply be 1 again so we times it by 1 which in this case will give us 20 lots of x plus 4 also power of 3 there okay so from here we can identify the values of a and b in that case a is this number here so that would be 20 and b is the power here which would be 3 okay and there we have it so that's the solution to question 3 and that brings the end of this video on the chain rule in the next video we're going to take a look at the product rule